Now listen the fuck up. Listen the fuck up. Look at this video game. This is called Night in the Woods. Okay, listen. It's a bomb-ass video game. If you haven't played it, you should fucking play it. It's great. Anti-capitalism, anti-men. They hate men over there. Ha! <laughs> uh, Anti-white people, um, and uh, uh, very pro-Jew. Oy vey. No, um, it's a very good game. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Okay? Unfortunately... Some drama has arisen concerning one of the people who was responsible for the development of this game. Now, can we raise our hands in chat? Throw up a hypers if you know who Zoe Quinn is. When I'm looking at the camera like this, I can't actually see the chat. I'm getting some mixed responses. Jesus Christ, you fucking babies. You fucking children. You fucking infants. Zoe Quinn, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> was a key figure, the figure, essentially, in the Gamergate controversy of 2014 and following. Essentially, Zoe Quinn was a game developer who made a game called Depression Quest. It was a free indie game, just a little, you just, you, you're, you're a little depressed baby and you try and do stuff, but you can't because you're depressed. Just a little indie game experience. And um, there is something about her like sleeping with some. I genuinely don't know. But the origins of her acute, alleged impropriety spawned out into this glorious conspiracy theory about uh, SJW game developers collaborating with journalists to destroy gaming for the white man. And she was a they they were at the center of all of it. Like Zoe was like the the nugget of this. Like this was like some Jewish Jewish question level shit. It was like a like a Dyson sphere built around Zoe Quinn, built to absorb drama energy from their from their fucking uh, from from their fucking I don't know SJW vibes. It is wild how much shit has come up over it. There are people who think Zoe Quinn is like a murderer. Like the, the, the like stored bodies somewhere. There are people who think that they're in like collaborate collaboration with like a elite echelon team of top tier games journalists who are trying to turn all games into walking simulators. It's it's like God, I I can't catch you all up on the Gamergate shit. Okay, I can't do it. I can't. I'm sorry. I that's listen. In ten years, the fucking historians are gonna t take note of this event. They're gonna have textbooks out in it. There are gonna be books about Yay Thick. Yeah, Zo Zoe Quinn did 9/11, for example. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Zoe Quinn was responsible in uh for for the transference of funds during the Iran Contra deal. Uh, Zoe Quinn was one of the people who brutalized the um the the um. Uh, the the nation of Panama when Teddy Roosevelt was trying to get the canal built there to serve American imperial interests and I'm reasonably sure that Zoe Quinn um, was the first person to discover um, one of the ways to prevent the transference of the Black Plague in the uh, uh, 15th century Europe but didn't tell anyone. Um, it's 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 so it's so much. Okay, so let's take a step away from that. Um, that legacy. And let's, let's focus on this. Okay, yeah, Zoe Quinn was fucking throwing uh, dead plague bodies over the walls of London trying to get that shit. Um, yeah, Zoe Quinn, fall of Constantinople. You know how it is. Um, whatever the case may be, Zoe Quinn history as a person, more drama arose surrounding them about, what is it, five days ago now? Let's go over it. Now... <clears throat> Get over there. So this is going to be a little bit long. It's also going to be a little bit gratuitous. Zoe Quinn on Twitter um, posted a series of screenshots from their notes application on there. Oh, wait, what type of phone has a ratio like this? What type of phone has an aspect ratio like this? This is like a water bottle aspect ratio. What? What? This is like a bumper sticker on its side. Like what? I have no idea. Whatever the case, but yeah, this is like a dick ratio phone. This is like a like a heavy fucking piece of meat phone. I don't fucking know. iPhone XS? I don't know. Gay? Gay? Gay. Whatever the case may be. I'm going to read this out loud, okay? It's going to be a smidge long. Smidge long. 
going to be important for what's coming up, okay? So for those of you who don't know, it gets a little bit dicey. By a little bit dicey, I mean rape. So let's, let's, okay? <clears throat> I want to say up front, I'm not saying this for anyone but me and the other people that I know have been hurt by him and might in the future be hurt. I read Nat Nat Nathalie Lawhead's post about her rapist being an industry legend who took advantage of her and poisoned her career, and it shook me to my core. Her waning health, her fear, the way she described all of it feeling like drowning, and my heart broke for her. Beyond that, I felt ashamed. So many of the little details, down to the timing, had been things I've gone through too just a few months into my time as an indie game developer, and it's haunted me ever since. It's why I don't go to GDC anymore. I'm drowning, too. A few months into making games, I was sexually assaulted. My visa status was threatened if I told anyone, and he went out of his way to tell the community that I'd been falsely accusing him of rape when I hadn't said anything to anyone, but a third party who saw it happen firsthand confronted him about it the next day. This story isn't about him. After years of therapy on himself, he reached out and apologized for everything, and I've forgiven him. But that's the background to this story. One month after the assault, I wanted to leave Toronto. I was scared, I couldn't sleep, and I had almost killed myself over it. I had a suicide note and everything ready to go, but I just didn't want to do that to my roommate. Enter Alec Holoka. That's an important person in this story. You're gonna need to remember that name, Alec Holoka. Enter Alec Holoka. Yeah, the one from Aquaria and Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods is that game with the cat. He was one person who I felt like in my newly chosen field had my back. He talked about how great and cheap Winnipeg was, and we flirted and talked on Skype for hours. He knew I was in an incredibly vulnerable place, and he asked me to come visit him in Winnipeg to see if I'd wanted to start an indie house there with the three friends I'd been talking about the idea with, and to see if the thing between us was as cool as it seemed at a distance. Two weeks. I'd buy the plane ticket there, he'd buy my plane ticket back. He knew I couldn't afford it otherwise. So that was the deal. I wouldn't get home for a month, and only then it was because my roommate used his miles to get me out of his apartment that he had physically confined me to. While I was in Winnipeg, he slowly isolated me from everyone else in my life while absolutely degrading me whenever we were alone. He convinced me to sh talk the three friends out of getting a shared place with me there. He convinced me to let him program my game instead of the friend I had been working with despite many protests. He screamed at me for over an hour once because of the tone in my voice when I said hello. He wouldn't let me leave the apartment without him and refused to give me the code to get in. About the sexual assault, he blamed me. He said he was jealous of me to be wanted like that. He'd bring it up during sex, where he'd regularly be mean and violent. He told me he loved me in a way no one else would, because he could see I was terrible and he loved me anyway. When I bought it, because that's how you feel when you're recovering from being sexually assaulted. I spent a lot of that month hiding from him in the bathroom. His moods would shift and he'd throw things and hurt himself seemingly at random and blame me. He'd jam his fingers inside of me and walk me around the house by them when I told him it hurt. I was scared to leave. I was scared to tell anyone. He'd act normal when other people were around and lay into me as soon as we were alone, then apologize and say how much he needed and loved me. I even got more scared when the two weeks had passed and he kept putting off the agreed plane ticket home. I spent a lot of that time hiding in the bathroom from him. My roommate started to get scared and asked me if I needed help getting out. I said yes, and Alec barely looked at me as I left. When I got home, I sent a cordial and friendly breakup email. He lashed out and banned me from an indie games community he ran, banned himself, and then went to other industry legends asking them to help him kill himself because I was such a bitch. He made sure to blacklist me at important industry events. He tried to ruin a career I'd barely started. To a degree, it worked. The night GG started, that's, uh, Gamergate, I vague booked about it without specifying which ex and two other women in games immediately messaged me to ask if it was Alec. He'd done similar things to them. They knew he'd been fixated on me and were also too afraid to speak up about an industry legend. It's been the better part of a decade, and I'm still afraid of him. Too afraid to speak out, especially because I've gone through so much publicly. 
Like people will just roll their eyes and ignore me as if there's some karmic limit on how much bad shit can happen to someone before people stop listening. I'm afraid that people will care more about their love of Night in the Woods than they will about the safety and truth of women and non-binary people in games. I'm still afraid of him. I'm afraid of telling anyone about him. I'm afraid of how many indies have seen this behavior and given him a pass. I'm afraid of being in the same room as him because I'm afraid he'll hurt me again. I'm afraid of all the developers who watched this happen and watched him scream abuse at another woman out in front of Moscone during GDC. But being silent for years has been worse than the fear. I skipped the last two GDCs because I couldn't risk being around him or seeing everything clap for him on stage, especially not people I knew. I don't wish any ill will on anyone. I know Alec is likely not well, and I will always believe in rehabilitation over punishment. I don't want anything bad to come of this to his collaborators who may not know any of this. But I've watched enough of the big names in the indie community to know about him, so much so that the reaction to his first meltdown about me was, oh well, that's Alex, what can you do, Alec? And I've seen enough to know nothing's going to happen about this particular broken stare, unless somebody says something. But we're all scared. I'm scared. A big childish part of me has been hoping people would somehow start caring or figure it out on their own. But feeling like a coward in the face of Nathalie's strength, because like I have nothing to hide from my own, or feeling like I have nothing to hide from my own life because it's not safe and I can't tell anyone why I'm hiding, of knowing I wasn't the first or last, of drowning, that's too much to keep carrying with me. I just want the other boot to drop so I can breathe again. I don't want another new dev to get hurt and hear that same, oh, that's just how he is, after the fact that I did. I just want to breathe again. So, <clears throat> that was Zoe Quinn's accusation. Zoe Quinn, uh, to summarize everything, accused Alec Holoka, um, one of the developers of Night in the Woods, of essentially trapping her in an apartment, uh, 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 trapping them in an apartment for a month and sexually abusing them during that time, then blacklisting them from industry events afterwards, threatening suicide, blah, 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 classic abusive behavior. Listen, if you've ever, like, if you've ever dealt with an abusive partner or had a friend who's dealt with an abusive partner, all of this rings familiar to you, okay? This is very very classic abusive behavior. None of this is out of the realm of like reasonable possibility. All of this is is very much par for course. So how do we react to this? Well, listen, we've got whew, we've got two actors in here. OK, you've got Zoe Quinn, uh, the subject of more drama than perhaps any other human since Jesus Christ. Uh, and you've got Alec Holoka, somebody who up until this drama was disregarded as a, in effect, flighty SJW video game developer, largely ignored and degraded by the same sort of people who were abusing Zoe Quinn. So the question then, do they hate Zoe Quinn more than they hate pretending to care about SJW game developers? Well, here's a news article. Night in the Woods developer Alec Holoka dies. A few days after Zoe Quinn's accusation, Holoka killed himself. I think he shot himself in the head. I just heard that as a rumor. I don't actually know. Maybe he took pills. Who the fuck knows? Doesn't really matter. Whatever the case may be, up and killed himself. Now, Following his suicide, his sister wrote out on this. His sister, Alec Holoka's sister, Eileen Holoka. You see, they have the same last name. That's how you know they're related. It's narratively convenient. Um, wrote out about him. Um, while writing out about him, here's what she said. And in case it's not already fucking obvious, Alec specifically said he wished the best for Zoe and everyone else. So don't use our grief as an excuse to harass people. Go outside, take care of someone, and work towards preventing these kinds of things in the first place. Alec Holoka's sister said she believed Zoe Quinn. Alec Holoka's sister said that she and Alec both said they wanted no harm to come from, uh, to Zoe from this. Alec Holoka's sister has since had to lock her Twitter account 
after being deluged from abuse from people who hate Zoe Quinn, accusing Alec Holoka's sister of being complicit in Alec's suicide for not having his back. This is Scott Benson. Scott Benson, right here, see, these are words Scott Benson typed, uh, was the other developer of Night in the Woods. Scott Benson, Alec Holoka, together, friends. Not really, actually. This is a 26-minute read. It's an article that he put out on Medium. Fantastic read. I'd recommend all of you take a look at it. I noticed, by the way, that the other people who are covering this drama, the usual actors, the quartering and geeks and gamers and what have you, they're not really talking much about this article. They're not actually reading out the contents of Zoe Quinn's accusation either. I wonder why that is. Link it? Yeah, sure. Here. There you go. Look at that. Scott Benson is, to my mind, by the way, more responsible for uh, how Night in the Woods is today than Alex Holoka, or Alec Holoka is. Not that that's really relevant to this issue, but for anyone who's uh, interested in sort of the pedigree of Night in the Woods, Scott Benson is the person you should be looking at. Anyway, Scott Benson also made Night in the Woods. This is a 26-minute read. I'm not going to read it out loud for you. Instead, I'm going to summarize it for you. Alec Holoka was from the testimony of Scott Benson, somebody who worked with Alec for years, uh, every bit as abusive as Zoe Quinn described. Scott Benson currently has PTSD and is seeing a therapist following his experiences with Alec Holoka. Scott Benson believes Zoe Quinn. Scott Benson says that Zoe Quinn is not at fault for Alec's suicide. And furthermore, Scott Benson says that in his limited contact with Alec Holoka. They lived in different countries. Uh, the picture that was painted of Alec's engagements with his friend circles and with the women he would date was every bit as bad, if not worse, than what was described by Zoe Quinn. That it is very likely, in fact, that uh, Alec Holoka has left in his wake a path of tens or dozens of people who are broken and abused and uh, uh, um, in other ways made vulnerable by his habitual treatment um, of women. It's a great read. You really should go over it. Scott Benson, this article, this excellent, excellent character testimony on Alec and this filling in of the issue, um, to my knowledge, has not been gone over by any of the people who are currently drama hounding, who are currently grifting, making video after video on how Zoe Quinn is a murderer. They have, however, called Scott Benson uh, complicit in Alec's murder, or sorry, suicide, um, for not having his friends back. The reason why they say this is because Alec Benz, or Scott Benson, after, um, after, um, realizing or after hearing about Zoe Quinn's accusations, uh, uh, distanced himself and the project team that had worked on Night in the Woods from Alec uh, 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 Holoka, which is reasonable to me. They say that's being fired. There was no company, so it's not being fired. Uh, to voluntarily distance oneself from somebody who is accused and s substantially accused of uh, serial sexual abuse, I think is a reasonable, you know, personal decision. But I, I don't know. I don't like sexual abuse. Maybe that's just a sort of a, a personal preference on my part. Uh, anyway, Scott Benson has been suffused with abuse following this because he is now complicit in working with Zoe Quinn to, um, you know, uh, 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 cancel culture Alec Coloca into suicide. So that's cool. It should be noted, by the way, um, though there are fewer articles about any individual number of them, that since Zoe Quinn put out their accusation, Zoe Quinn has, um, th their, their allegations have been substantiated by, um, quite a few other women, some named, some who have preferred to remain anonymous, who've said they too were victimized by Alec Coloca. Scott Benson has said it was knowledge amongst some people in the gaming industry that if you were a woman, you should never be in a room alone with Alec Coloca. So what do we get from all this? 
So Zoe Quinn has blocked their Twitter to prevent abuse. Ala Kaloka's sister has locked her Twitter to prevent abuse. Scott Benson has not locked his Twitter, but has nonetheless been suffused with abuse. A number of the people who have substantiated Zoe Quinn's allegations and added their own voices to the pile have had to lock their Twitters or have just been a few suffused with abuse. Where are we getting all this? Um, so this is, uh, this is quite a bit. Uh, uh, where, are we, where are we getting all this from? Well, what we are looking at right now is the legacy of Gamergate, essentially, because none of this would be covered in the way that it is right now if Zoe Quinn was not the headline attraction to this accusation. It's unfortunate, actually, in a uh, just a consequentialist sort of way, that the accusation against Alec Kaloka had to stem from somebody who had such a, a, a dicey you know, reputation to begin with, an undeserved dicey reputation, mind you, but dicey nonetheless. Um, so where does Gamergate come into this? I found this article from medium.com. I haven't read it, but I brought it up because I like that it has the pictures of some of the people responsible for this and they look kind of bad in the picture. See? So that's how I know that this article agrees with me because the people here look dumb and bad. You see, look at this guy on the left. His hat says deadbeat. <sighs> Damn, how apropos. Um, <clears throat> the guy at the center uh, right here is the quartering, who is perhaps the biggest uh, spineless dipshit um, to have ever graced the sort of post-Gamergate like uh, games drama scene. Um, he is, in my mind, worse than Keemstar. He is a genuinely subhuman piece of shit. He's uh, streaming right now, complaining about people who complain about him. Uh, we can go take a look at his YouTube channel. Uh, actually, I think that'd be a lot of fun. You know, in Destiny's community, Destiny the streamer, they call him uh, the Quivering because after a phenomenally dumb take, um, Destiny brought him on and he backtracked on literally everything he said. It was some dumb take about like SJWs on the working in Apex Legends because there was an agender robot or something. It was some like, it was some like phenomenally dumb take. It was like, holy shit. Um, and he went on Destiny's stream and he just walked back like everything, like every single fucking time. Quarter Pounder said he'd be debating anyone today. Talk to the cunt. Can't. I'm banned from Twitch and he's streaming on Twitch. He wants to talk to me. He can talk to me. He may have more YouTube subs than me, but I consider this. This guy's like genuinely subhuman. Like I have nothing to say to him. He, like, he'll just walk back on everything that he said. So he. Let's see. So here's a video he put out. Zoe Quinn gets video game dev fired and project canceled for a tweet. You can see from the thumbnail, here's Zoe Quinn with scary eyes. You see? Grr, cancel culture. Speaking up about people who sexually abuse you. Grr. And um, Alex chilling prediction in 2016 and Zoe hiding her money, part three. I don't know. There's Anita Sarkeesian here, somebody who hasn't been relevant to anyone but like loser, grifter, ex-gamer gators for the past four years. So I don't know what the fuck this is about. That's cool. Zoe Quinn returns posts, odd message, and vengeance plan surfaces. I'm back. Creepy old messages wanting vengeance. Take them down and bury them. Do you know what uh, uh, the quarterings videos remind me of? They remind me a lot of the National Enquirer. That's what they remind me of. Um, the hyper sensationalization built around a particular political agenda. They really do. They're very, very similar. Isn't he a fascist? I mean, if he had a spine, he would be a fascist. Yeah. Um, also, fascists are occasionally like intelligent enough to meaningfully advocate for a coherent political philosophy. But the the quarter pounder is like legit, like sub fridge temp IQ. Um, he it's like the National Enquirer right there. What the quartering does is he finds news articles or any anything that's happened. He puts out like three, four videos a day, and all of them are the same. He'll he'll be he'll he'll be like me. See, look, I'm a little corner square down here. You see, he'll record this uh, off stream. And he's a little square down here and he'll read an article out loud here. He'll 
right here. The article will be here. He'll read it out loud. And then every once in a while, he'll add in his little snippets, which will usually be that SJWs or cancel culture is ruining gaming or the, the feminazis or blah, blah, blah. The exact same thing. It's the same thing. He does this all the time. Um, and he'll read it and he'll put his own little spin. And then in the sort of supplementary, like the thumbnail or the description, he'll talk about, uh, um, you know, Zoe Quinn, the murderer, or they'll sensationalize with the, the cutesy title cards and the, you know, the, the narrative sort of played up. But then when called to account for any of the phenomenally dumb shit, he says, he walks it all back because it's indefensible. He just, it's just drama farming for drama farming. Um, here, I mean, a great example right here. I refuse to buy Final Fantasy VIII eight remastered and you should too do you know what that thumbnail is do you know what that thumbnail is right there i retweeted it on twitter so we don't have to look at the shitty youtube thumbnail new video a stand again oh now we've got a gecko in the way bitch please new video a stand against bullshit censorship final fantasy 8 remaster has delivered a new wave of bs censorship that loser sjw seem to be celebrating stop letting people gaslight you over censorship death by a thousand cuts is real and it must stop and here's the picture you see in the original here i'll get rid of my cam so we can really take a look really seep this this censorship in in the original this harpy i assume um has like a muff thing but in the ps4 remaster she's wearing a very short skirt can you feel the censorship this bullshit has to stop remember what they took from us And he also types out every word with like a capital letter. <sighs> like the problem with making fun of the quartering is, is that it's not, it's not actually possible because he like blurs the line between, um, between satire and reality. He is truly phenomenally beyond reproach because everything he does is so incalculably stupid that it falls below the base thresh line of like coherence necessary to form a cogent argument against it but that's okay <clears throat> give us back that coochie do you think the quartering knows that if you type in harpy coochie on like uh on like uh uh, uh e hentai you can find uh Lots of harpy coochie. I don't know. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's um, let's get really to the meat of this. So, do you see these big three deuterinos? There are a lot of people who are very upset with Zoe Quinn. We can actually find them really quick. Oh, let's go on YouTube really quick. It's not just the quartering. Watch this. Zoe Quinn, murderer. Zoe Quinn, body count. Zoe Quinn, confesses. That's, this is the number one thing that comes up. Zoe Quinn murderer. Murderer. For accusing a man of abusing them sexually. Nine years ago. In a Twitter post. Let's see what we get if we... Let's see. Let's filter it. Past week, obviously, because that's when this happened. Famous fraud Zoe Quinn, the bloody cost of professional victimhood. Zoe Quinn lies, a man dies. Zoe Quinn just showed us everything wrong with cancel culture. Zoe Quinn vanishes after man she accused killed himself. They seem to keep using the pictures from the same like photo shoot because they look like menacing here, I guess. Ooh, look at this fella. My name is Rag. Body shaming is wrong. We're going on a different path. Cancel culture is cancer, and it has killed someone. The blood on Zoe Quinn's hands. Cancel culture led to ending his life. Alec Holoka's sister, critical of him, but not Zoe Quinn. Cancel culture has killed a man. Zoe Quinn is a liar. Look, they keep using the same fucking picture. Zoe Quinn caused a man's death. Zoe Quinn got it there to kill himself. Ah! Ah! It keeps going. Twitter. Quinn body count. Oh, shit. The Quinn body count rises. <sighs> ah! Ah! 
these um these people are fucking insane um so right now there is a fucking legion of angry sexless men like let's be real come on like, like let's be guys let's be fucking real angry sexless men mostly white who are furious at zoe quinn for cancel culturing a man to death who are furious at Alec Holoka's sister for standing up for Zoe Quinn rather than Alec. <coughs> Still sick, what are you going to do? Who are furious at Scott Benson for his op editorial, who are just mad, 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 mad. Let's talk about this. Watch me blow through these arguments. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to fucking, uh. you want to talk about abuse? Watch what I do to these fucking arguments. All right. Let's go over it one by one. Now, whew, all of the arguments in response to Zoe Quinn's behavior here are read like a like a laundry list of the toxic shit that people say after uh, after they've come out about somebody else abusing them. Let's go over this. Why didn't Zoe Quinn go to the police? Because what happened to them took place between two different countries eight years ago that can't be substantiated with any empirical evidence. Anything that they chose to go to the police about would require the exact same kind of um, testimony and uh, allegorical evidence that was provided in the Twitter screenshots that they put out on Twitter. What's more, uh, there are a myriad reasons why a victim of sexual abuse may not want to subject themselves to the criminal justice process. And even if they did did do that, they would put the exact same kind of testimonies out, the affidavits, everything that they have already done. In fact, those would probably be even more substantiated because other people would be called in as character experts, witnesses, testimony, what have you. So if you're arguing that there would be some better outcome to this if they had instead decided to go to the police, A, no, there wouldn't have. It would have been worse for Alec. B, no, abuse survivors are totally absolutely 100% A-OK -okay with speaking out about their abuse eight years after the fact? I'm sorry, I thought... I thought we were pro-freedom of speech here. I, th I'm so I didn't realize that uh, when it came to accusing other people of bad things that they've done, you had to go through the police, that you weren't uh, uh, morally allowed to make those accusations on your own. Uh, no, nah. no, 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 no. This is indefensible. And by the way, for those people who are making those arguments, you are making a presumption of Zoe Quinn's guilt about uh, their presumed dishonesty here, and you are making accusations against them. There's literally a Twitter hashtag, Zoe Quinn body count, Zoe Quinn murderer is the first thing that follows up if you type Zoe Quinn into YouTube, why don't you go to the police? I'm sorry. Zoe Quinn's been committing murders? That's a serious crime. You should go to the police about it rather than making, you know, false allegations over Twitter and YouTube and stuff. Have you considered that? Other fucking arguments, okay? Uh, uh, <clears throat> what happened to them wasn't actually abuse. We have no way of parsing out the empirical data and what happened. This happened eight years ago. However, in regards to reasonable um, assessment of testimony provided, if you have a situation in which the person who allegedly committed the abuse denies nothing, Alec denied nothing before his suicide, the person who made the initial accusation was specific in their claims and it corresponds to um, other people's understandings of the event and time frame that took place. Zoe Quinn's roommates can, like, a roommate can testify to this having happened at the time. If that accusation is then substantiated by a bunch of other people coming up and saying other shit that is comparable and fits within the time scale that is made clear by other people, and the co-developer of all of this says that they too, and their experiences with Alec Kolokov, not only completely believe the allegations, but believe there are many, many, many more people who have been victimized to this extent that haven't been able to speak up, and you have Alec Kolokov's sister agreeing with the accuser, saying that this fits within his behavior and that, you know, she 100% believes Zoe Quinn, and... And you have Alec Kaloka himself saying not only Zoe Quinn, uh, uh, not saying that Zoe Quinn was wrong, but also saying that he wants no harm to come to her. I'm sorry. Listen up, buddy. Hey, we got the justice system over here. You got to prove your uh, uh, guilt, your jury of 12, okay? That is not how belief and accusations work in the real world, okay? Listen the fuck up. When someone comes up to me and they say, hey, could you spare me a dollar? I really want a snack. I was going to go get a snack. I lost my dollar. They do not need to provide to me evidence which would satisfy a court of 12 peers. When somebody comes up to me and they say, hey, 
Why are you hanging out with that dude in Reno? He's kind of a fucking dick. He called me a cunt behind my back one time, and when I went up to him and confronted him on it, he said that I was a lying bitch. I don't need to go and look at them and say, Hey. Without character testimonies from at least four other people present at that event, and a written testimony from the person accused, and empirical evidence that suggests that both of you don't have another alias at the time, or an alibi, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go with, uh, oh, I'm going to have to go with an impartial decision on this one. No. Because our ability to assess people's guilt or innocence in a de facto non-legal sense is very different from the expectations that we set within the confines of an American courthouse. I live in America. If you live in some shit country, I'm sorry. Then I don't know how the fuck your justice system works. <sighs> <clears throat> Thirsty. At the end of the day, there's really like no argument here. There really is no argument. To people who think this is cancel culture, what the fuck is it cancel culture? Zoe Quinn said they wanted what's best for Alec Loka. Cancel culture to accuse someone of sexually abusing you? I'm sorry, listen. I like it when words have definitions. I thought cancel culture was when someone does something like comparatively minor, but then you distance yourself from them because they're not morally pure enough. I didn't realize that prolonged habitual um, predatory sexual abuse of multiple people, um, that distancing yourself from that person or that accusing them of doing that was cancel culture. Cancel culture refers to a community distancing yourself from a person over something they've done that doesn't fit a purity test. This is just one person accusing Alec Loka of having sexually abused them and then that being substantiated with literally every other fucking person. What? What? How, is the, how the fuck is that cancel culture? That's not cancel culture by definition. You're just angry at Zoe Quinn. You're just, you're just fucking angry. You're mad at Zoe Quinn. They've triggered you. You're quivering right now. Your, your, your fucking fury in here, your heart, your, your fucking Kokoro is going doki doki with rage. They can't keep getting away with it! <clears throat> Meanwhile, Zoe Quinn is like, just trying to fucking live. Have you ever heard the term rape culture? Maybe some of you have. Maybe some of you haven't. A lot of you have thought, oh, that's rape culture. What? Rape's illegal. What do you rape culture? Let me show you, or I can tell you actually, what rape culture is. Rape culture is when you live in a society or an environment. <laughs> we <laughs> live in a society. You know how it is. It's when you live in an environment of some kind where someone can rape you repeatedly and trap you in their house for a month. And then afterwards, they can call you a lying cunt, distance you, uh, or distance themselves from you, threaten to commit suicide if you tell anyone else, blacklist you from industry events. And then eight years later, when you finally come out about what happened, even though your claims are substantiated and bolstered by the sister of the accused, the business partner of the accused, numerous other women and industry professionals and are not met with a denial by the person you've accused yourself, but rather with a well wish, Alec Coloca said he wants no harm to come to Zoe Quinn before he offed himself, that people will still call you a lying cunt, that people will still call you a murderer, that people will still say that you have to go to the police or your accusations aren't valid, who will throw out a myriad hypocritical accusations that are absolutely indefensible in a direct argument, completely indefensible, but they throw them out because they're so fucking mad. They're so fucking mad. Thousands of people. That's rape culture right there. That's a little fucking weird, don't you think? A little, a little smidge weird. Just maybe a little, a little, little bit. That, that all this is going down this way. If I mean, if you think this is a thing, listen, I know maybe some of you Gamergate poisoned, uh, uh, you're super triggered because Zoe Quinn did a Kickstarter and stole everything and fucked every game dev into making every game a walking simulator. I don't fucking know what's going on with you, okay? Hey. Calm the fuck down. You don't like rape, do you? I hope not. Maybe some of you do. 
if you don't like rape, then you should be in favor of people speaking up about experiences where they've been raped. Ah, oh, but you, yeah, but cancel call. Oh, but you false allegations. Hey, I know. We shouldn't just take allegations at their word. But when allegations are substantiated, probably more substantially than any other rape allegation I have ever seen come forward in a social space. I'm not joking, guys. I've never seen anything as fucking rock solid as the Zoe Quinn shit. Can, can you like think of another? The accused sister, the accused, the accused business partner over a period of years and like dozens of other people. I like I, I li like I, I honestly can't think of anything more substantiated than this. That's this is about as solid. This is about as airtight as you can get. You know, and if you have a problem with this, with highly substantiated, bulletproof, airtight, multifaceted accusations of systemic wrongdoing, then what you're essentially saying is you're just just kind of fine with people getting raped because no one could pass the bar that you've set. No one could unless they go through the court system which has historically been a brutal, expensive, and unforgiving process for survivors of sexual abuse, and which would, by the way, lead to the exact same kind of public scrutiny that, um, that has come about through uh, Zoe Quinn's Twitter allegations. But if you think that, like, you should only ever be able to accuse people of sexual assault after winning a court case, I mean... I don't know, like, if you just have a problem with free speech or anything, but, like, uh, personally, I think the world's a better place where we can make accusations against bad people um, without a fucking judge standing behind us with a little thumbs up telling us, it's okay, you can say this. Uh, and let's be real, by the way, even if, she, even if all of this had been quietly going on in a court case and, and the allegations had, like, broke with the guilty verdict or something, like, be fucking real. You would, you would react the exact same fucking way. Don't, like, don't. Fucking... <clears throat> what happened with Ala Coloca is unfortunate. It seemed like Ala Coloca, not it seemed like, I mean, this is true. Ala Coloca has long time issues with mood disorder, mental illness, suicidal ideation. It is unfortunate. Uh, it's also unfortunate that he sexually abused a lot of people and left like a massive body count in his wake of abused, uh, traumatic, miserable human beings. Life sucks, but you can make it a little bit better by not being a dumb fuck and uh, dumping on people who have been like habitually abused. You can you can make it just a little better. And if you disagree with that, if you think, oh, whatever, cancel culture, oh, you think you should just believe all women, well, no. The problem isn't that I'm setting the bar too low, it's that you're deliberately setting the bar too high in this particular instance because your uh, emotional preconceptions about Zoe Quinn are blinding your ability to think about the situation rationally. And I encourage you, I implore you, facts over feels. <coughs> Still sick. And in regards to people like uh, The Quivering, I was watching uh, one of his videos on this, and uh, there was a particular segment that struck me. This is, uh, this is the quivering, uh, the most recent video. So this came out, what, six seconds ago? Much in the same way that his former boss contributed to it. Do I think that they are... Remember, former boss, that would be Scott Benson, the person who just didn't want to associate with the serial sexual abuser. Listen to this. This is really good, by the way. This is a, some key irony are both bad people more concerned with Twitter followers and likes and retweets than caring for their friend or just being the bigger person, which I think is something that is forgotten here in this culture that has been cultivated mostly by video games, journalists, video games, uh, um, uh, personalities. Uh. I agree. The quivering. I agree. One of the biggest issues here are people who are more concerned with Twitter following, with clout, with YouTube views and subs, who have already, in less than a week, made three clickbait videos the on this like subject, making baseless, 
unsubstantiated accusations following through in a years-long ex-Gamergate grift. I agree. Those grifters should really take a look at themselves, because they clearly don't care about seeing this through to a better end.